Hello and welcome to Uncovered, the podcast with your host, Jason Irving. Join me in a journey to understand what's truly happening in your world and the world around you. This is not about how you're living life on the surface. It's about what's truly driving you from under the covers. I'm going to take you on a journey to deeply uncover the reason why you are here. The ultimate purpose in your problems and the way that they have shaped your life up until now. See, I believe you have a purpose and your problems are the highway towards ultimate realization of that journey towards freedom and the reconnection of your true self. I've been told I have a different spin on most things and I'll be giving you my understanding of life, love and what we're all here for, purpose. To get the best out of this podcast, drop what you already know so you can discover what's beyond you. So join me, let's play this game of life and bring on liberation, transformation and change. Let's do this. Hey Jason, how are you today? Yeah, not too bad. How are you? I'm good. Well, what are we up to today, Ophelia? We're going to talk about joy. So joy, it's that thing that we're all looking for. We all want to have joy in our lives. We go and see comedians. We go and uh, have that ice cream. Oh, yeah. We have that chocolate to to bring something that's (laughs) going to bring this feeling inside of us. Chocolate has manganese in it. It's like the love drug that gives us this feeling. So we're all searching for joy in our life. We're looking for someone who's going to make us feel comfortable. Did you know um, that the thing that women want, the highest thing that women want of a male, if they're looking for a female-male relationship, is someone who will make them laugh? Oh, really? Yeah. That's the stat. That's the highest stat. They want someone to make them laugh. So women want a joyful man. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's interesting when we've got stats right now where men have the highest suicide rate yeah. Yeah, um, between males and females because we, we can't express ourselves and say what we need. So joy is one of those uh, amazing uh, emotions and a lot of people that I've met when I have uh, worked with them, they would be these joyous people and I'd show them what was going on and they'd be bursting into tears. So what I've learned with a lot of people who I've spent time with over the years is joy can often be a front for sadness. Mm-hmm. So people want to be seen as joyous and they're not necessarily joyous on the inside. So there's all these stats that say if you're, you know, you're joyous, you're 30, 30% more likely to succeed, 30, 30% more likely to be successful, uh, 30% more likely to have an ability to improve your work experience, so 30% more output. Mm-hmm. Now, I think this is just a joyful person providing stats. <laughs> Right, to be honest, <laughs> yeah, because I've got a really, really high workload and I'm not the most joyous person on the inside. Mm-hmm. Because of the work that I've done, I, I, I find a lot more joy than most people because I do what I love. So if you think about joy, where you're at right now, are you joyous in your job? Because if you're not then more than likely you're not really joyous in your life because purpose is what brings joy. Mm -hmm. A job where you are waiting for the weekend is not joy, it's a job. And if we're spending a lot of time doing something we really don't like, then how do we actually find joy in Mm -hmm. our life? So finding what you are here to do is essential to having joy in your life now how do you go like philly if you you, everyone's experienced this you're feeling sad Mm -hmm. and someone tries to cheer you up does it work Mm, i I guess usually not now tell me what happens inside when someone's trying to cheer you up and they're trying to tell you oh you know it'll be okay better luck next time you know all of those sorts of things what are, you, what are you actually really doing? Um, you're just not accepting what's really going on. Yeah. So you. So do you shut down? Like, do you yeah. tell? Do you stop telling the person who's trying to tell you to be joyful? Then I'm actually sad. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Because I'm like, well, they won't understand anyway. They'll just try to make me feel better. But you don't necessarily always want to feel better. You just sometimes just want someone to listen and say, it's okay that you feel this way. And have you found with the work that we do when? 
you've been really, really sad and not felt good and then I've come along and said it's okay for you to be that way. Have you felt joy? Yeah, and lots of relief yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it? So I've spent a lot of time with people who like to cheer me up and I, I, it irritates me. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things I see around joyful people is that they quite often bypass what's really going on so they don't want to dig in. Mm-hmm. So true joy comes from sadness, it's born out of it. So that's why when someone actually lets you be where you are and be okay with where you are, joy actually pops. I had this lady uh, named Willow. Uh, just last week she was in absolute tears, she was in agony, she just had an operation and I did some work with her around what was happening and all she wanted to do was laugh and smile and it took two minutes mm. and she's just like blown away. She's seen every, every therapist and done lots and lots of work on herself, two minutes. She posted on her page, oh my God, I just spent time with Jason and now I feel awesome, mm-hmm. right? That, why? I wasn't trying to make her feel joyful. I was allowing her to be where she was. Mm-hmm. And people don't understand how to build that. And then she was just fully in, her eyes were lit up, everything, there was a smile inside. Then you can see that with people, guys, like people who are truly joyful, they have a smile in their eyes. And if you see someone who's joyful, you have, a, you have to have a look in their eyes and see if it's real. Mm-hmm. Because there's smokes and mirrors with most people with joy, especially right now. What's happening on the planet at the moment is not necessarily so joyful. Mm -hmm. So how do we find joy in in life is I think we need to really dig in and and find out what it is that makes us tick for the things that we do, that we love to do and do more of those things. But ask ourselves why we do them, not as an addiction, do them because we really like to do them Mm -hmm. because they make us feel like there's a purpose behind it. You know how people go and do exercise because it gives them a good endorphin hit? Oh, yeah. 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 I can so, relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> so that is not what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about being able to be joyful if every one of your joyful things that you do are gone. What if you couldn't exercise anymore? What if you couldn't walk Mm-hmm. Right, all the natural things that we do. So, I've worked with people who are really, really happy until they break their leg, mm. and they're marathon runners, and they're devastated mm-hmm. because it was actually a crutch, the marathon running, and it was gone. Wanting to have kids, not being able to have them. Sad. Right. So, what we've got to learn to be able to do with joy is actually know that it's not going to be there for the rest of our life. Don't hold on to it when it's there. You know, every single person I've met, when they're joyful, go, oh, I'm really happy now. And they're like trying to hold on to it for grim life simply because they don't want to feel that other feeling that's going to come. Mm-hmm. So it must, it's like, what I'm doing now must be working. So I just keep doing that. But then eventually it doesn't work anymore. And you realize that there's cracks in it, but you don't really want it to go. That's right. So we've got to actually look at joy Again, like every single emotion, guys, as a, as a thing that we can spend time with, but don't try and hold on to it. Let it come when it's meant to. Let it come and show you things. And I'm going to give you a really, really important tip. Do you ever go and see a therapist or to find out about who you are, what you are, and why you are when you're really happy? No. Nope. <laughs> You do, so you can see how it can be a bypasser? Absolutely. Right? So what you've got to look at is is understand that you need to dig into your joy and work on yourself when you're joyful. It makes it easy as well, doesn't it? It does, because then you elevate. So there are people in the academy that said, oh, all of this cool stuff's happening. Right? I'm like, that's awesome. Let's make it even cooler. Let's look at your sadness. <laughs> yeah, and let's look at the sadness, but also let's elevate where we're going to go. Mm-hmm. So let's improve it. Let's go somewhere else and make, and so we don't stagnate. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really important. So I say this a lot, as you um, just pointed out, spend time with your sadness when you're in joy and your last joy will last a lot longer. 
because you won't be trying to hide the sadness or the problems, the anger, the frustration, whatever you do when you're under duress, spend time with that when you're happy. Mm -hmm. Because when you work on yourself in joy, it's actually faster. And then when the sadness comes, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hit. It doesn't create pain. So each time someone says, oh, I'm in really good shape, I'm like, awesome. Let's work on some sadness today. What do you mean? Let's work on some troubles. But I'm not in troubles, Jason. Let's work on them so when troubles come, you know how to respond to those troubles and they won't last. Mm -hmm. And you'll be joyful for the troubles. That makes a lot of sense in that regard as well. Yeah. So one thing I look at when I'm working with people, when they just break into the academy, we do this uh, framework which is basically what we do is we look at the goal that they want to set for the year and then we look at all the things that would stop them from achieving that goal. Thoughts, feelings, emotions and things that they do and not do. Mm -hmm. Now when we do this every time someone points out all the stuff everyone goes oh my god now I really understand myself. That's the first thing that happens. Mm -hmm. There's a big breath of uh, relief and then when I take them through the, the thoughts um, feelings and the limitations in a little process, they feel excited, happy and relieved because there's a pathway forward with this stuff once you actually don't judge it as wrong. So what you want to learn around working with joy is making sure that you don't hold on to it, you work with all the ranges of emotions while you're in it. And if you can't find it, Discover, understand yourself, and joy will appear out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's a massive opportunity. And make sure you don't bypass. Don't go, oh, oh I, want, I need to go and do that yoga because I'm feeling sad. So do you th do it because you think, like it. <laughs> sorry. Um, so do you actually think that more addictions are born out of joy, like out of looking for joy or out of joy than out of sadness? Or um, I think there's a bit of both. So I, I teach this in, um, in joy and peace is gluttony, mm -hmm. right? So people can be addicted to that drug and it is an addictive drug, mm -hmm. right? So this is why we get addicted to food, exercise and also drugs that are, are, are harmful. Either one, we have to know how to tame, mm -hmm. tame the beast of sadness and joy and know what they're there for. So on, on the extremes, right, of polarity, overjoy is bipolar. Mm -hmm. That's what they talk about in Chinese medicine. Overjoy is a bipolar disorder in science, in the scientific, from a Chinese medicine perspective, it's a disease. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you're a joy chaser and you're on the extremes, you're going to be joy sadness, and that's bipolar syndrome. And I've spent time with bipolar people, and I know, I know they, they don't want to have peace, um, which is another podcast that we've just done. Um, they actually can't, they just want that joyful moment, or they tripwire into, into the sadness, into the depression. Absolutely, yeah. So don't try and chase that dream of joy, because you're going to end up feeling sad, angry, or frustrated. Let it come. Don't, don't force it. Do things that you like because you want to, not because they give you joy. Find your purpose. That will be the thing that will actually lead you to working with all your problems because that's what purpose does. And it will also lead you to more joy than you can ever imagine. I stopped working in 2001. In 1998, I figured out what I really wanted. And then I started the journey towards not working. And spending time helping people grow and and doing all the things that I do I've had to deal with so many things and joy has been the result a lot of the time simply because I'm doing what I'm here for so you need to find your thing guys the more you find your thing then joy will be a, a, a common standard in your world I think that would be a good episode to do as well how to find your purpose yeah, we'll do that at some point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks All so right. much, guys. Thank you. Now, if you really like this information around joy, you might not want to hand it to a really joyful person because they might get a bit pissed off. So just see how you go. If you hand it to someone who is a joy chaser, 
they might not like what they're hearing right now. But if you like it and you want to send this to people who really need it, um, please review and share it. And also, if you want to see us, our website for this podcast is www.wellnessbreakthroughacademypodcast.com. Looking forward to you hearing from us soon. Thanks. Thank you.